Felipe Engineer Manriquez. Um, he is an international lean speaker, a serial entrepreneur. Uh, Felipe is committed to lean um, practitioners and with two decades of construction industry experience. He's also an active contributor and member of the Lean Construction, construction Institute and is an approved instructioner, uh, in, instructor and facilitator. So with that, we're going to um, bring Felipe on. Welcome, Felipe. Hey, Brittany. How's it going? Oh, it's going well. And you know what I didn't mention? Felipe has a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you did. And and my favorite part of what I do is uh, I'm a respect for people enthusiast, Brittany. <laughs> as <Yes>! you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so tell us, how are you doing, Felipe? I am struggling like everybody else. And uh, that's exactly where I want to be. I want to be in it. So every day is not perfect. Uh, every day is a challenge and something new. And I work with quite a few people in and around the construction industry. So there's a lot of people in the same boat. And that's when, when you sent me the note on what this was going to be about, I said, yes, I barely even stopped reading it to the last sentence. Yeah, you know, I became my <laughs> own... Uh, <laughs> But I always say that people don't have a lot of time to read, but it was so short. It was just a sentence. And I thought this would be really good to share and hear from other people too. I've been listening to the previous guests and uh, it's been inspiring. So thank you for putting this together. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about what I'm going to learn and what this can turn into, because I, I don't think it stops here. You know, I mentioned earlier that we are doing a Collaboration Now series. So we're going to be having conversations about how we can continue to collaborate every other week on Friday at this time. And um, so, you know, I, 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 I'm really excited to to have you on, Felipe. And, and um, I think you have such a great perspective. I'm going to jump right into the question. How well, can you how 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 do you facilitate creating empathy in a distant society? OK, so the, the where I start with is just like Eliana said, start within. And I thought and reflected on this when the pandemic first hit. How is this going to change how I work and mm -hmm. what's going on? in where we are in the United States and in the world too, we're seeing things that we've never seen before. And I thought connections make my experiences better. And that's where I, that's where I started from. So when things happened, I was able to pivot right away because feeling with people is something that I know from my own experiences definitely had massive impact on me. And luckily for me, I got into Brene Brown like seven years ago. And I wanted to share my favorite of all time, Brene Brown quote, and I'll just put it there on the screen so people can read it. And that's what is exactly resonated with me. And when I heard her say it in her talk about the power of vulnerability, I thought the best experiences in my life have not always been thought of as the best experience while I was having it. Mm. And the, the cool thing is with, with people, you get some different perspective. And with people that you trust, you can you know that you're in a, a caring environment. And the difference between empathy and sympathy, and I think I used to confuse it way long time ago, but thank you, Brene, for helping me understand the difference. Empathy connects. You have to be in the person's shoes. You have to put yourself in their place. That means that something inside of you knows what they're going through. Whereas sympathy is you just, you're giving someone pity or you're feeling sorry for them. And I've got a story to tell about that. But when I thought about this, getting ready for this talk, I remember, you know, what Brene taught in that, in that uh, power, of vulnerability, power of vulnerability speech. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have to be able to recognize the other person's truth and their emotions. Mm -hmm. And both of those together. And in the construction industry, often emotions are like, a, we don't, there's no emotions in construction. Like there's no crying. <laughs> There's no emotions, right? We just go to work and do the job. And that's far from the truth. I, I can't tell you how many times people have broken down and been real. And it's been for the better. It's made people tighter and closer together. It's made project teams work better together when they see, oh, the leader of the project is struggling too. It's not right. just me, right? It's not right. just me. 
the the the, the part that Brene also brought, and this was research based on, uh, I believe it was a woman that was studying nursing fields and other care fields where care was like critically important to the job. She said, you can't judge. If you're in a situation where someone is, you know, being emotional or struggling with something, you can't judge. And if you put yourself in their place, you're there with them. So how do you treat yourself? I think one of your previous guests, I might've been Dr. G was talking about, you know, what she does for her, her own self-care so that she's, she's ready. And uh, you're going to have Rex on later. I don't want to steal any, any of his thunder, but Rex is like famous in my mind for telling people the importance of sleeping. If you're like in my own family, they know that there's, there's two types of us, right? Yeah. You got your, you're tracking it. There's two me's there's the well-rested me and there's the lack of sleep me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you don't want to be the lack of sleep me. <laughs> like they know. And then the, the third thing that, that I learned from Brene and again, seven years ago, wisdom that's still true today, even with all the things that are happening, she said, you have to communicate that to the person you're with or the group of people you're with. So one of the examples I want to share was like in a big group setting, Oftentimes project teams bring me in to facilitate and, and do like a pool planning session using last planner system production controls or a scrum session more recently, get to use scrum uh, with project teams. And what I do is I have to first understand like, who am I talking with? Yes. Where, where, what's their state of mind? And then quickly connect. And it could be like 10 people, 30 people. I've had as many as 50 people and make those connections with each of them individually and not think of them as a big group, like a one mass thing, because they're not, they're all individuals. They just so happen to be working on this project. Mm -hmm. And when I do that and, and approach it that way, I get different results than, than if I, when I tried doing it the other way, which I learned a decade ago, like don't one size fits all is not right. And the same is true, especially with creating empathy and connections with people. You have to connect with them right where they are at the moment they are for exactly what they need and don't put yourself in it. So a story I want to share quickly, a friend of mine, I had met a, earlier this year or no, before the pandemic hit. So we met in person and they were in one of the sessions where I was just creating awareness around a lean methodology. And the person was in the room like this. Change. Arms, just, yeah. Just Re crossed. Rejecting yeah. the idea of body language. Yeah. And I, and I looked, I looked at the person and I said, I need to talk to you. Like when this is over, I need, I'm going to come and talk to you. So don't leave when this is over. And so we talked afterwards, it was over and they were expressing doubt. And how, how could this work? How could this thing that we're showing actually work? Even though the session was hands-on interactive and people can get their hands dirty with what we were doing. And I said, the change has to happen here. Uh -huh. So if you don't think it can work, it won't. I was like, let's go. We can always go somewhere. And, and then I said, I don't even want to convince you. If you're getting the results you like with what you're doing and your teams and people, don't change a thing. Teach me what you're doing. But if you're dissatisfied, which it looks like you are, you've been frowning for an hour and a half, just thinking like <laughs> this is too hard. I said, that's how we're talking now. And that ended up turning into a mentoring relationship. Wow. Now that person and I, yeah, and it, and it it was voluntary. It wasn't like I forced myself upon them. So that created further conversations and dialogue. And then probably by the second or third conversation, Brittany, they opened up and they told me this like scarring experience that they've had in our industry. I mean, it was like one of the worst stories I'd ever heard. And I saw myself in that story. Wow. And I said, I've had, and when the person was telling me, I listened and made the space and paused. And when they were sharing some of the very hurtful things that they experienced, like within the last 12 months, even it had a series of bad things happening over the course of a decade. And even just 12 months ago, you know, people had lied to them, you know, in, in our business and they were dealing with how do I navigate? How do I trust again? Because all I see is this pattern of people being dishonest and I didn't give any advice. I remembered what Brene said, don't judge, communicate, connect, don't solve the problem. And I just paused and I listened. And the person even said, aren't you going to tell me what to do? I said, heavens, no. 
No way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I will do, if you're interested, I'll share a story of something that happened to me. And, and I said, but not to tell you what to do or to do what I did, but just to show you, like, you look at where I am now. And I went through that myself 12 years ago. And I'm still here. Wow. Felipe, uh, you're you're another one that we could do a long form podcast yeah. with. I know you have long form too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I how long my show could be. <laughs> <laughs> I I tried to go around that forty five minute mark, uh, but you know sometimes yeah. it gets up there. But yeah, I mean, I think you dropped a ton of nuggets. Can you throw that that quote, your favorite quote of Brené Brown yeah. again? Yeah, for everybody, this is what Brené taught me. Empathy fuels connection. And it was uh, coincidentally 2013. 2013, man, it's it's, it's timeless. Perfect. It's perfect. Timeless. Yeah. Uh, so with that, Felipe, um, we have we on. have to move on to the next one. But thank you, thank you, thank you. We're gonna have to continue this conversation with you.